All right, class, this is part two to systems of uh, equations, EOC review prep. You're going to need some graph paper. You can find this on the uh, web page. Please either download, um, download this or you can just get your own graph paper. Um, and you, in some cases, you can use your graphic calculator. Okay, but some of the systems of equations problems will not allow you to use your graphing calculator. All right, so keep those things in mind. It says, number one, only chocolate and vanilla ice cream cones are sold at the ice cream store. In one day, the number of chocolate cones, so we got the number of chocolate cones, um, sold one more, so chocolate, Less um, chocolate is C, you see, so I'm going to go ahead and put C. Uh, chocolate cones, so what's so, up, women? Chocolate cone sold was, so that's equal to one more, one plus four times whatever the vanilla is, which is V. Okay, so that's this first part. A total of 121 cones were sold. So, Chocolate cones plus vanilla cones add up to be 121 total cone, cones sold for that day. So that's this is your system of equations where your C has the same meaning in both equations, which is the number of chocolate cones sold. And your V has the same meaning in both equations, that is the number of vanilla cones that are sold. Okay, so we can choose whatever method we want to choose to solve this um, system. It says write the equations, and we did that to determine the number of chocolate cones sold that day. Use the equations to determine the number of chocolate cones sold that day. So we're looking for, we're going to solve, or we want to solve for C to figure out what C is. So we're going to use substitution, okay? We're going to use the substitution method. So C is already isolated, so I'm going to... I'm going to substitute this expression into the other equation. So I'm going to rewrite the other equation. C plus V is equal to 121. And I'm going to replace C with 1 plus V. I'm sorry, 1 plus 4V. Then bring everything else down. So I'm using the substitution method here. Okay. So now V is the only variable that's missing. So I'm going to combine like terms. This is 4V plus 1V. This gives me 5V. Bring everything else down. Okay. And then I'm going to subtract one on both sides. All right. This is going to give me zero. This gives me 5V. This gives me is equal to, make this look like a V. This is equal to 1, 120. Okay. All right. So now, in order to get V by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 5. So when we divide both sides by 5, we get 24. So V here is equal to 24 vanilla cones. Okay? So this is vanilla cones, but we want chocolate cones. So we're going to use now the easiest equation, the easiest original equation, one of these, to figure out what C is. The first equation is the easiest to me. So we got C is equal to one plus four V, okay? So now we're gonna replace V with 25. So this is C is equal to one plus four times 25, okay? There are 25 vanilla cones. So we're gonna say C is equal to um, five, four times 25 is 100. So we have one plus 100. So C is equal to uh, 101. So there are uh, 100, well, what did I do? This is 25B. Oh, I said 25. Why did I say 25? This is 24. Gee whiz. This is 24, y'all. I was wondering why that wasn't right. All right. 
So this is going to give me 96. And so now we have 91 plus 96, that gives us 97. So there are 97 chocolate cones. Sorry about that, y'all. Okay. All right, so now let's look at number two. Let's look at number two. All right, number two says, the math club sells candy bars and drinks during the football game. All right, 60 candy bars and 100 drinks sell for $265. 120 candy bars and 90 drinks sell for 270. All right, when you set up these word problems, I don't know if you remember me telling you this before, that you already know that this is going to be written in standard form because they didn't necessarily tell you the slope. They didn't necessarily tell you what the starting amount was, but they gave you totals. So you know that your equations are going to be written in that standard form, AX plus BY is equal to C. Make sure you go back and look at your notes on that, okay? So your totals, you have two totals here. Your first total is 265. Your second total is 270. Those are your C's. That's your totals there. Okay? All right. So now you have to identify what's missing. What is it that you don't know? And look at this. It says, how much does the candy bars sell for? So you don't know how much the candy bars are, and you don't know how much the drinks are. So x could equal your price for the candy price for candy for each you know candy and y could be your price for each try to squeeze that in there didn't I? for each drink okay all right so if that's the case then to get this total You've got to say 60 times uh, 60 candy bars times the price of each candy bar. So that's 60x plus 110 drinks times the price for each drink. So that's 110y. Then you got to do the same for this one 120 candy bars times the price of each. So that's 120 x plus um 90 drinks the price times the price of each drink which is 90 y so this right here is your your system so now you have to solve you have to solve this system so the best method to use i'm going to use the elimination method okay i'm going to eliminate so i have I have here 60x plus 100 TMY is equal to 265. And then I have um, 120x plus 90y. Okay, so all I did was rewrite. I'm going to eliminate the x's because here, even though I can't eliminate by adding or subtracting, I can make these two the same by multiplying the 60 times two, okay? And that's gonna give me 120. So I'm gonna multiply everything here by two, okay? So this is going to be 120x, and then 110 times two is gonna give me 220. This is plus 220y. Okay, and then when I multiply um, this by two, this is going to give me five, five thirty. Okay. Double check myself because I just did 265 times 2. 
Yep, 5.30. Just double checking myself. All right, so we got 5.30 there. And now you have 120x plus 90y is equal to 270. Now, are you going to use addition or subtraction to eliminate? Eliminate the x's. So in order to eliminate these, you have to subtract. So you're going to subtract everything here. So when you subtract 120 minus 120, this is gone. Okay. When you subtract that 220 minus the 90, that's going to give you 130Y. Okay. And when you subtract the 530 uh, minus the, what, 270, this is two. This is two sixty. So now you can solve for y by dividing by one thirty on both sides. Okay. So this gives me y is equal to. We have two six two sixty divided by one thirty, and that gives you two. Okay. So it's going to be two dollars here because we're talking about money. Express your answer in dollars. So it's going to be $2 for um, the price of each drink. So this is uh, $2 um, per drink. Let's just put per drink. Okay. So now we're looking for the candy. So use the easiest equation to substitute the two in two. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use the top one. We got 60x plus plus 110y is equal to 265, okay? So let's plug in two. So we got 60x and plus 110 times two is equal to 265. So this gives you 60x plus the 110 times two is gonna give you 220. Uh, Bring everything else down. To get x by itself, subtract the 220 on both sides. Subtract 220. Okay. This is gone. This gives me 60x. Okay. And here, when I subtract, this is 5. This is 4. Okay. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 60. So when I divide, 45 divided by 60, that gives me 75 cent. Okay, so x is equal to 0.75, which is 75 cent. Okay, so this, the cost for each piece of candy is going to be 75 cent. Number three, two times Antonio's age. So I'm going to say two times a, I'm going to make a Antonio's age. Uh, plus three times Sarah's age. I'm gonna use X for Sarah because I don't like to use S. It looks like a, it looks like a five or something. So this is A and this is X. Age equals um, thirty-four. Okay. Then it says Sarah. So remember Sarah's age is X. So it says X um, is equal to. Let's see. Is equal well is also five times Antonio's age five a. All right, so now we have to decide how old is Sarah. So we're going to use the substitution method. Let's plug this five a in four x. So rewrite the other equation using the substitution method. Go back and look at your notes for the substitution method if you if you are lost, and substitute x. 5a. So this is 2a plus 3 times 5a equals 34. So we have uh, 2a yeah, plus 15a is equal to 34. And then when you add these together, this gives you 17a is equal to 34. So you're going to divide both sides by 17. When you divide both sides by 17, that gives you 2. Okay, so A is equal to 2. So that's Antonio's age. This is Antonio's age.
Okay. So now to figure out what Sarah's age is, use the easiest equation. I'm going to use x is equal to 5a to figure out how, how old Sarah is. So I have, I'll put it right here. I have x is equal to 5 times 2, okay, because that's Antonio's age. And that's going to give me x is equal to uh, 10, okay? So Sarah is 10 years old. This is how old Sarah is. Okay. All right. The next one. It says, Paul sells chocolate chip cookies and peanut cookies, peanut butter cookies. All right. So that's what he's selling. He's selling these two cookies. All right. Baking a batch of chocolate chip cookies takes... 1.75 cups of flour and two eggs. Baking a batch of peanut butter cookies takes 100, I'm sorry, 100, 1.25 cups of flour and one egg. Paul has 10 cups of flour and 12 eggs. That's what he has. He makes a profit of $4 for the chocolate chip cookies and $2 for the peanut butter cookies. How many batches of peanut butter cookies could Paul make to maximize the profit? Okay, so super, this is super important that you understand he only has a certain amount of, of things. So what is it that you don't know so we can establish what your X and Y should be? You don't know how many batches of peanut butter cookies. That's the first thing they talk about. So X is going to equal number of batches of peanut butter. I'm going to just abbreviate peanut butter cookies. Okay. And the other thing that you don't know, obviously, is the number of batches because it didn't tell you of uh, chocolate chip cookies okay these are your two unknowns all right so now we're looking at he only has a certain amount of supplies he only has 10 cups of flour so you can't use any more than 10 cups of flour and you can't use any more than 12 eggs. And that's super important because it takes both of those things to make the batches of cookies. Okay, so we got to write that down. Let's talk about the flour first. So I'm going to write the expression for the flour. All right, so for the, let's do X. For the peanut butter cookies, he can only, for flour, let's see here, for peanut butter cookies is 100, one, I keep saying 100, 1 1.25 cups of flour. So it's 1.25, okay, um, X. And then he also, we're just dealing with flour, for the chocolate chip cookies is 1.75 plus 1.75 um, cups of flour, okay? So it can't exceed over 10 cups of flour. So this amount has to be either less than or equal to 10, okay? Cannot go over 10. So now let's look at the eggs. We're going to do the same thing for eggs, all right? For eggs, for the um, peanut butter cookies, there are, is one egg. So we got one X or just X plus for the chocolate chip cookies. Let me see how many eggs, two eggs. So this is plus two. Um, oh, I keep saying, I keep getting that wrong. I don't know why I keep putting X here. This is supposed to be Y because this is for the chocolate chip cookies. Okay, see how your teacher keep messing that up? I must be tired. All right, so your um, so the amount that you can't go over for eggs is twelve. 
Okay, can't go over 12. Okay, it can be equal to 12, but it, it just can't go over 12. Okay, all right, so now this is part of your, your system. Okay, you have your answer choices here. And so this is the, let's see, how many batches of peanut butter? So your batches of peanut butter, the number that that represents is what? Is, is X. So these are X values, all right? So what you could do is work backwards, substitute these numbers in to see what your Y would be, okay? Now we got to talk about the profit though. Got to talk about the profit. Okay, so you're only making $2 for each um, peanut butter cookies that you sell, plus $4 for each batch of chocolate chip cookies um, that you sell for profit. Okay, so you want to maximize the profit. So which one of these is going to maximize the profit? Okay, which one of these is going to give you the highest amount of money? But you have to follow this criteria. So this is the criteria that you have to follow. And by following this criteria, which of these is going to get maximize that profit? So these are your X values. Your X values are the batches of peanut butter cookies. So if I have one peanut butter cookie X, what's um, how many batches of um, chocolate chip cookies Y are there? So let's plug that in to see what your Y is going to be. So um, let me just plug in this. So I have, and I probably need to use a separate piece of paper because it's not gonna be enough. So I have um, X, which is one. I lost my train of thought for a second. One plus Y, two Y is 12. So look at what this gives me here. And I probably should just use the calculator for this one. We got two we got to subtract one on both sides so this is going to be two y okay this is going to be 11 divided by two and this gives me y um and this is going to be five point uh five point five okay all right, so you can't have part of a batch. So this is just going to be, Y is going to be five here, okay? Because you can't have part of a batch. So we got five for Y. So if you have five for Y, what's going to be the profit? What's going to be the profit for this? So look at what your profit is, okay? So your profit is going to be, um, and I probably should just write it under this right here. You got X is equal to one and Y is equal to five because you can't have part of a batch. That's going to be two times what? One, two times one plus uh, five times what? Four or four times five. Okay. And so this gives me two here and this gives me 20 here. So this is going to be. $22. This is a $22 profit. So this will give you $22 profit. Okay. The next one, let's do two. Let's substitute again. We got this time we have two. We're using this because this is the easier equation to do. Two plus two y. Okay. It's to 12. And this is going to be um, subtract two. This is going to be y. Bring this down. This is 10. And this, when you divide by two on both sides, this gives you five here. Okay. So that gives you, that gives you five. Well, no, no, no. Hold on. Yeah, that's right. That gives you five. Okay, so this is going to be, this is going to be, no, that's not right. Hold on. I plugged in two. Um, then I subtracted two here. Then I brought this down and I divided by two here. So this gives you Y and that gives you, 
Wait a minute, hold on. Did I do that right? Yeah, well, okay. All right, so five. So this is going to be, I don't know how we got two and then five. Okay, well, all right, so let me keep going. 2x plus 4y. So I'm going to substitute. My x value is 2. So this is 2 times 2. My y value is um, 5. So my profit here is 4, and this is 20. So this is going to be 24. And that is not right. Hold on. I, I did that wrong. I did that wrong. No, I had to have done that wrong. Hold on. Hmm. This is so annoying. Okay, so I thought about it. You know what I didn't do? I didn't make sure that it fit both criteria. Okay, so this is a much longer problem than I thought it was. The first one's okay. You know, the first one's okay. It is 22, but the second one didn't, it didn't, it fit one criteria, but didn't fit the other one. So let me substitute the two into this other equation right here to make sure um, because remember, it can be less than um, or equal to, okay? It can be less than or equal to. So um, the value 5 is what I got here for this, which is correct. But I also need to figure out if, it, uh, if, if I have enough flour. I have enough eggs, but I also need to see if I have enough flour as, as well. So let me check that one. I'm going to use the calculator because that'll go by a little bit faster. We have 1.25, and um, it is times the 2, because it's 2. So this is going to be 2.5. So I have 2.5 um, plus 175y less than or equal to the 10. Okay. All right. So let's see what the Y is going to be. We got five for this one right here. Okay. So let's see if five will work is the same for this answer as well. All right. So we're going to subtract 2.5 from both sides. This gives us 175 Y. Okay. All right. So this is going to be 10 minus the 2.5 and this is 7.5. Divide both sides by the 1.75. This is a very long problem, y'all. I'm so sorry. Divide this by 1.75. You don't have to write all of this down. But this is 4.2 and some change. So this is 4.2. You can't have part of a um can't have part of a batch. So we're just gonna use four. So that's why this is. This is going to be four. It didn't look right when I did it. All right, so now let's let's plug this in to see how much profit this is going to be. So this is two times two plus four times the four. And that gives you $20 profit here. So it's $20 for this one. So, so far, A has a bigger profit. So let's do five, okay? All right, so let's do, we got 5 plus 2y, okay? All right, so we'll get some track 5 from both sides. I'm substituting. Remember, this is my x. I need to figure out what my y is going to be, and it has to fit both. You have to have enough flour and eggs, okay? All right, blessed be. So we got 7 here. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So this is going to give me here um, 
this is going to be hat, which is uh, what 3.5. Yep. So it's got to be three. Okay, so about three can't have part of it. So let's also do this one. Okay, so substitute five here. So let me go ahead 1.25 times five. That's 6.25. So let me do this one 6.25 plus the 175y. Okay, so let's check this one, make sure this is right. So I'm going to subtract the 6.25 on both sides. Okay, so this is going to give me 175y. Oops. So we got 10 minus 6.25, and that gives me 375. So you're going to divide by 175 on both sides. It doesn't look like this is going to be good either. 3.75 divided by 1.75. And that gives us 2. That gives us about 2. So we have to use about 2 here. All right, so this one is 2. Oh, my goodness. All right, so the profit here is going to be 2 times 5 plus 4 times the 2. And that's going to be $18 profit. So still, this is going to be better. Okay? So let's do, let's see if 8 is going to work. Oh boy. So 8 is X. You're only getting um 8 you're making all of that. So this is not going to work either because logically speaking, if you have um, only $2, most and you, you did eight batches here, you're going to get more profit um, if you decide to sell chocolate chip cookies. So the more chocolate chip cookies you sell, the better your profit is going to be. So D is not going to be the correct answer because you spent most of your supplies on the $2 profit instead of on the four. So your answer here is gonna be A, okay? Your answer here is going to be A. All right, and I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm going to post the work for these, okay? I'm gonna post the work for these so that you can see what the answers are. Um, and if you need me to come back and work any of them, I will do that, but I don't wanna take up too much of your time on the video, okay? So if there's one that you really need to see, please let me know and I will show you. But I can give you the answers that um, I've already I've already worked out. So for for number five, for number five, you should have gotten A here. Okay. This is another profit problem. And these are the different um, inequalities that you have to make sure that work. The same way that I did this one up here, you have to do this down here, all right? Number six, you're not gonna really have a problem like number six, but the answer to that is C, and you won't have a problem like number six, all right? Um, number seven is this right here, okay? This is what you should have gotten here. This is the double, see how this is the double shaded region? And your point is right in here in the double shaded region. Points that are on dashed lines are not a part of the solution. Solid lines, they are a part of the solution, okay? If it's on a solid part line, but it has to be in this section where it's overlapping the solid line. And so if the point is on the solid line and it's in the overlapping section, it's a part of the solution. But if it's on um a solid line that's down here that's not in the overlapping region, it is also not a part of the solution. So your solutions can only be in the overlapping region and in the overlapping region on a solid line, not a dashed line. That's not a part of the solution. Okay. Number eight is going to be A here. Okay. When you graph it, make sure you put both equations in slope intercept form. And A should be your answer. So if you need to see this one, let me know. And I'll show you how to do number eight. Okay. All right. Number nine is eight weeks. All right. 
Number nine is eight weeks. Number 10 is going to be this point right here. All you're doing is substituting your X and your Y into the equation to see which one is the solution, which one's true, but it's asking for the one that's not gonna give you the correct answer. So when you plug in X and Y here and here, this sentence was true. Even when you plugged in this for X and this for Y, sorry, even when you plugged in this for X and this for Y, it made this sentence true. When you plug this for X and this for Y, it made the sentence true, made it true. When you plug this for X and this for Y, it made this sentence true. And there it is right here, okay? But the one that's not true is when you plugged in this one. It's looking for the one that's not. So when you plugged in X and Y here, this is not true. Five is not greater than five, but it's equal to, okay? All right, and number 11 is what is the scenario that could be modeled for this graph? Look, what you're doing is you're looking for B and M. So your B is five. That's your starting amount right here. Then you're gonna use rise over run to figure out what your slope is, okay? You can write it in slope intercept form. You see how we wrote it in slope intercept form? And you can change it to standard form. Once you change it to standard form where your, a, your X term is first, then your Y, then your C is on the other side, then you are able to read this to see which makes the most sense. The number of pounds of apples Y, okay, so the number of pounds of apples Y minus two times the number of pounds of oranges. So when you write that, look, this is what it looks like. That is neither one of these, okay? You see how you got Y minus two times the number of pounds of oranges at most. Remember we talked about what that inequality would be. This is at most five. That's not either one of these. The number of pounds of apples Y, so this is Y minus half, that's one half, the number of pounds of orange is X. So this is the equation here. At most, again, that's gonna be less than or equal to five. That's at most. That's neither one of these again, okay? That's neither one of these. So let's look at this one. The number of pounds Y, so we write Y first, plus two times the number of oranges, two X, at most five. That's this one right here. It's written in standard form. If when you write it out, if you wanna see that, it, that it's this, then get Y by itself by subtracting the two X on both sides. And then you will see that it's still this equation. Y uh, less than or equal to negative two X plus five. And the last one is incorrect, okay? Because you got Y plus a half again, half x at most five. So that's not the right um, equation either. Okay. All right, guys, hope that helps. Please make sure that you submit this assignment, ask questions if you need me to work more problems out.